Smash 4 is a silly game that can be taken a lot of different ways. This will be the last video on my channel dedicated to this game, and you're going to be watching a lot of goofy footage with some serious dialogue over top of it, which, yes, is a convenient excuse to burn through my archive, but I also think it's a pretty good analogy for Smash 4 as a competitive game, or really, the Super Smash Bros. series as a whole. No matter how many intense moments, heartbreaking losses, or triumphant screams this community produced, at the end of the day, it all took place over a stylized sumo match between childhood icons, which a serious mentality can never fully overshadow. If that comes across as dismissive or sarcastic, it's absolutely not. This lighthearted core is what allowed Super Smash Bros. to thrive as a competitive game in the first place, and is why it continues to do so to this day. Smash 4, though, played out in a way which was, uh particularly lighthearted and, ironically, extremely stressful as a result. If Smash 64 was the game of advantage, melee precision, and brawl mentality, then Smash 4 was the game of fear. Comebacks were king, acknowledged by everything from the stock count to rage to its balanced roster of terrifyingly effective fighters. And I think more than any other entry, Smash 4 was the place where you never truly felt safe until Xander Mobius gave you that reassuring yeah. to let you know to stop gritting your teeth for a moment. But. It was also the game of opportunity. Whether through Smash 4 itself, the changing landscape it found itself a part of, or some combination of the two, this always felt to me like the time when Super Smash Bros. grew up. Where competitive Smash 64 and Melee were played regardless of developer intentions and brawled directly in spite of them, Smash 4 attempted to close that gap, its tournament seen regularly rubbing shoulders directly with Nintendo. Melee basked in the same glow, and despite a clear divide between the two communities, it's hard to argue that they didn't enjoy a symbiotic relationship, which led to Super Smash Bros. being a genuine career path if you had what it took. But, with Ultimate ready to take the reins, the rumblings are already starting. I have a sneaking suspicion that when the dust settles, Smash 4 may be the least fondly remembered entry in the Super Smash Bros. series. It didn't have nearly the complexity and depth of Melee or the accessibility and treasure trove of solo content Brawl offered, being intentionally designed as a bridge between the styles, and it certainly doesn't hold a candle to Ultimate's ridiculous scope. But while I acknowledge all of this, and even agree, Smash 4 holds a unique spot in my heart that nothing can replace. It was the first video game that ever inspired me to enter a tournament, or commentate, or buy a capture card. Immediately followed by many terrible videos that will never see the light of day again, but eventually they stopped being quite so terrible, and I have an audience now. Not the biggest on Earth, but still larger than I could possibly have wrapped my head around, and I really do appreciate the hell out of all of you. It's a similar story for a lot of people. Smash 4 came around as YouTube was beginning to reward more polished content, and the truly world-class channels that thrived under the game were fantastic. I really do think that Smash YouTube can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any gaming community on the planet. So while some of my fondest memories come from smacking my friends and brothers with Melee Kirby, and you better damn well believe I'll be deep into Ultimate for years to come, Smash 4 will always be my game. To the players, the spectators, the artists, the YouTubers, the streamers, and especially Masahiro Sakurai and his team, thank you. Your actions illuminated the lives of millions of people. All of it centered around this one... silly... game. Let's do it again.